James King. Good afternoon. Welcome, my wonderful 3L, third year <laughs> law student at UDC David A. Clark School of Law. I want to start this interview by ask, reminding you, you once told me where you were when you received the LSAT study book. Where were you? When I first received a, the study book for the LSAT, I was actually incarcerated. Um, for a crime that I had not committed. And what was the crime? What the, were you charged with? I was actually formally charged with a second degree murder, involuntary manslaughter, and assault with intent to commit great bodily harm. It's stunning. You don't really normally think about a young man who's a third year law student who has that in his past, that he was locked up for second degree murder um, when someone understood enough about you mm -hmm. to bring you the LSAT book. If you'll get through this, start studying for the LSAT, you need to go to law school. That's an amazing story. Yeah, the people who actually gave me the book were both the, uh, the person who ran the jail and um, a gentleman who at the time right now is a federal agent. They had watched. A federal agent, an FBI agent? Yes. He's a a FBI, FBI agent <laughs> comes to visit you yes. in jail yes. and brings you an LSAT book. Yes, he tells me he, he thought that I was wrong. Um, he was very disappointed in the way things had played out, but he saw a lot of potential in me. And Boy, was he right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're the president of the Student Bar Association. I um, hope he's coming to your graduation. I've been actually trying to locate him since he became a federal agent. Uh, I have not been able to do so at this time. We'll keep working on that. Yes, we will. We'll keep working on that. So let's start back. You were a young guy mm -hmm. in Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, where'd you go to school? I went to a school in the city of Southfield, a number of different schools. Uh, my mom found a way to actually work the system where, although we stayed in the city of Detroit, I, myself and my younger brother, we would go to schools in the suburbs. Good for her. Yes, work right. it, work it, work it. <laughs> Right? That she did. I mean, she made sure you got an education at a time when Detroit was on very, very tough times, and I'm sure the public schools were absolutely challenged. Yes, definitely. She did a very good job, and it was actually hard for her to, to do so. So she, she moved into the city of Southfield, but we never were able to be the same place for more than two years. But she always emphasized that education is important. and uh, You will go to school. You will go to school, <laughs> whether you okay. like it or not. So you went to high school. I went to high school. You had a big brother who was a football player. I did. I always looked up to my older brother. And one of the first did things. Did you look up to him literally? Literally. Is he bigger? And figuratively. Yes, wow. he is. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. So yeah. he played football. So you picked up a football. I did. How were you? Pretty good? I was a late bloomer. Um, I didn't do very, I wasn't exceptionally good as a, uh, as a kid. But when I went to high school, um, which was even further in the suburbs, I was able to, uh, to find my niche, and I, I stuck with it, and I became a very good player. Uh, I, I, I'd have to say you became a good player. You were recruited for college. I was. Where uh, did you end up going? I was recruited by a number of different colleges. Um, honestly, I, I got kind of tired of the process, but I chose to go to Central Michigan University and, and pursue my uh, academic endeavors there. And what was your major? I majored in small business management, uh, which is, was kind of formulated into entrepreneurship, and I minored in marketing. And you played football most of the time. Yeah, well, my first major was football. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of double majored in and So you uh, had a triple major. Management. Exactly. Okay. So you majored in football, and you played at a high level. I did. So high, in fact, that you were recruited uh, to play professional ball. But first, let's go back. Mm -hmm. You um, are the first in your family to Very go to college. First. first person in my family to go to and graduate from college. How did that happen? I have a very strong support system in my family. Uh, we're uh, perfectly imperfect. Imperfect, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> they, they always, but they, all, they are always supportive, especially my sisters. They're always, they're always there for me to speak to. Um, they motivate me, and if I need anything, 
they kind of leap at the opportunity. So how sisters are like that. Speaking as a sister, <laughs> I hope you're not as badly behaved as my brothers. Well, I mean that's arguable. It depends <laughs> on what you ask. If you met them, you, you know, I'm sure you'd fit right in. Yeah. Um, so how many kids in your family? It's six of us. Okay. Six of us, three boys, three girls. Um, you know, we have our problems, but like I said, we're always there for each other, so it helps. And every family does. Exactly. Who inspired you to go to college? My mom is where it initially came from. You didn't have a choice. No, there was not. Your option. mom was in charge of that. <laughs> <laughs> you were not going to not go. Exactly. Okay, so Central Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, while you were there, did you ever think about going to law school? Uh, not initially. Um, that came later? It came a little later. Uh, ironically, I, I mentioned being uh, going, being a lawyer when I was young and arguing with my sisters on a different, <laughs> number of different occasions. That's what but, brothers and sisters do. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but the actual, um, I guess, drive to achieve it didn't come until after. So we're going to talk about that. But after, mm -hmm. after college, you went, you were drafted by the Cleveland Browns. I wasn't drafted. I was actually signed, though. Okay, signed. I was signed. Second um, day of the draft, I, I remember. Yes, I was signed as a uh, restricted free agent or unrestricted, one of the other. I was signed. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, okay. I played with Cleveland um, for, uh, for a little while. It wasn't too long. Um, I was released probably towards the, the end of the year, I think. So you're playing professional football. Mm -hmm. It's a dream come true. Mm -hmm. It's they pay you money to play football. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, you get distracted. How come? What happened? Well, during my senior year of uh, at Central Michigan University, uh, a, a friend of mine uh, was going to celebrate a he, a job that he had just got. So I decided to attend because we know the. It was, a, it was a struggle for him to do so. You're a college kid? Mm -hmm. You celebrate things. Exactly. Okay, that's your <laughs> job. While there, there was a, um, an argument, a dispute, and a brawl kind of erupted. And within this brawl, uh, a young man uh, hit his head, fell into a coma, and, and he ended up subsequently losing his life. And the police, uh, in the response to um, not a very fruitful investigation, just kind of came through after a year and a half, two years, and charged as many people as they could with almost whatever they could. How many kids, how many people, it was kids, right? You were called college kids? Mm -hmm. How many kids were charged? I don't remember the exact number. How many did we end up with in court? Uh, a lot of people took pleas. I went to court because I wasn't going to jail for something I didn't do. Okay. So uh, myself and uh, one other individual chose to, to go to trial and they combined our, our case. And luckily you're independently wealthy so you went out and got the very best lawyer money can buy? Not really. No? That's uh, not how it worked out? <laughs> not at all. How'd you get legal counsel? Um, through, again, through my support system. My, actually my high school coach uh, and my family got together. We put as much money as we could together and uh, they actually took out a loan to try to, to support me in this situation. Uh, it was something that I appreciate, you know, a lot even to this day. Yeah, definitely because yeah, especially, another, especially how it turned out. Yeah, another thing that made me want to come to, to UDC Law School was uh, having no money and going to look for an attorney and knowing I had done anything wrong. It would even if you had. Yeah. Let's say you, yeah. if you had made a mistake, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you need legal counsel. Mm -hmm. And it was it was sad because. They, the lawyers I spoke to, they were throwing numbers at me everywhere from 30,000 to 50,000, one even said 100,000, and I, I was upset, you know, this is my first time ever having anything like this happen to me. And last, I hope. And last. <laughs> <laughs> and That's our I, plan, right? Exactly. I had, uh, I knew I was innocent, but they didn't care about that. They cared about this bottom line number. And I always said to myself, if I ever had the opportunity to help someone, I don't want money to be an issue. I want to just talk about what's the problem and how we can solve it. So you eventually got a lawyer and you went to trial mm -hmm. and during the trial witnesses were testifying mm -hmm. and what happened? As they were testifying the truth started to come out. You know this was a an abuse of power. I should have never been charged and in fact when the, the what they charged me with doing was uh, was was kicking someone 
And not only could they not prove that, but also it was the, the person who committed, the, who did the autopsy pointed out that the, the gentleman who fell into the coma didn't do so because of any kicking. He didn't die because of any kicking. And then immediately that combined with the witnesses saying that they were kind of coerced into giving these confessions or these names snowballed into them offering me pleas.